friends. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different than anything I've done before, which is kind of go through the process from beginning to end of how I start writing a song and then start recording a song and eventually end up getting to the final product as you guys end up hearing it. My latest release is a song called Too Late For Me and if you haven't checked it out you definitely should. It is inspired by the TV show Riverdale. And this one was a good example of kind of how I ended up doing it from start to finish because there were like some changes along the way and just the way that it developed I kind of kept track of that. I figured I'd kind of talk a little bit about my writing process with this song. I never went into watching Riverdale with the intention of writing a song about it. I watched the first two seasons on Netflix and I ended up enjoying the show. I mean it's, you know, kind of exactly what you would expect. But the thing that I was really interested by and kind of started getting the wheels turning for a song idea was this idea in the show that like everyone's kind of battling between their, their good side and their dark side. I really wanted to play off of that. So the first thing I actually started writing for this was the piano. Usually that's not how it works. Usually I start with with like a little lyric snippet or a melody, but this I actually um, had this piano thing in my head. So what I always do if I come up with some kind of idea is I record it on my phone. I, have, I do like a voice memo and uh, record kind of my idea or whatever that I've developed. So this is what that initial piano sounded like. I think you can probably hear from that that definitely the piano changed a little bit, but you can hear where it started and how it ended up similar to what I've got now. And I think you can hear it from this next little lyric snippet as well. I ended up changing it up slightly for the final version, but this was the first thing that I came up with when it came to this song. I can feel the shadow hanging over this town. Da -da 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 da 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 and it's funny, I think I've ended up recording some of these voice memos in like really weird places sometimes because sometimes when I get an idea I don't want to forget about it so like if I'm like shopping or something I'll be sitting there and I'll try and find like a corner and like duck down and record a thing or a lot of times like sitting in my car so I'm sure I look just completely crazy like talking into my phone to myself. The next part of the song that I came up with was the chorus so here's that. Strip my armor, lay me bare, cross your fingers, something's there, can't see what's underneath. The darkness runs too deep, oh, I just keep on hoping and it's not too late for me. A lot of times I think what happens is I will have a melody first and then it can be a little challenging to sit down and put it with the piano. So I think that ends up causing some changes sometimes because if I have like a little melody or lyric snippet and I go and I sit down at the piano I might find something that I like a little bit better or it doesn't quite fit what I had in mind. So here's an example of me sitting down and putting it with the piano part that I came up with earlier. And that part actually has one of my favorite lyrics from the song, which was, um, I want to be a hero, but the villain's having more fun. I came up with that along with a lot of the other stuff that I write in the shower. I think it's because it's so easy to get distracted by stuff when you're just sitting and hanging out. There's like so many things that can distract you. And wherever I'm in the shower, there's like nothing else to distract me. So I do a lot of my best writing in the shower. <laughs> this next part is probably the most noticeable and biggest change when it came to this song. Originally, I had put the bridge into a major key. So the song is in a minor key, so it has kind of that like dark, gloomy feeling. And then the original version of the song had the bridge going into this kind of positive sounding light major key, which sounded like this. And I 
actually went into the studio with that as what I planned on doing for the bridge. So once I have a song completed as far as the writing process, I usually get in touch with Daniel Dennis, who is the guy that produces all of the songs that I write. I've been working with him for years now. Basically anything that you've ever heard that's been a studio version, it's been the two of us. And I know I've said this before, but the thing I love about working with him is that we work on it together from start to finish. So every single sound, drum beat, I mean, everything that you hear in the song is something that the two of us handpicked out together. When I went into the studio for this one, the first thing I told him is I wanted it to have a really industrial sound. And that is one thing that he's very skilled at, is figuring out what I'm talking about when I say stupid things like that. The first thing we always do when we're recording is we will lay down a piano track, so just me playing the piano all the way through. And then usually he has to do this thing called quantizing, which means that if I play something that's not perfectly lined up to the beat, which happens often, I think partly it's because piano players have kind of this feel for something so they naturally kind of speed up and slow down but when it comes to like structuring a song it really does need to be pretty um, in line with the the beat to make it easier to add other stuff in. So usually after I put in the piano he goes through and makes sure everything is lined up properly so that way we have a nice foundation for what we're going to build for the track. And then I do what's called a scratch vocal which is just going in and singing the song all the way through. It's not going to be the final vocal for the song but it just is something for us to have to work with as we add on to the song. The other thing I said I wanted for this song that I had a very clear idea of was um, the really strong like boom, ta, boom, ta. So we ended up cycling through like all of these different sounds trying to find the right kind of like boom clap to go in there. And then we just started going through like industrial sounding sounds. What I figured I would do is I would break this into three sections. I wanted to show you kind of the progression of the intro, the progression of the chorus, and then the progression of the bridge. So this is what we ended up with after that first day of doing the scratch vocal, the piano, and then just trying to add in some sounds that we liked. depends on how, I'll say, beefy the song is, like how much stuff goes into it uh, determines how many sessions we do it in. So that was kind of what we had accomplished after the first session. The second session, we were trying to figure out how we could really make the song impactful, so we tried out a bunch of stuff, and what we ended up landing on was actually some electric guitar, which fit the song really, really well, so we added that in. And then we had a bass guitar kind of giving it a lower register sound. So this is what it ended up sounding like after the second session we did. is like I said earlier we usually end up doing literally every single sound and effect that goes into the song together but sometimes Daniel likes to get new um, like plugins and different sound effects and things so he ended up getting excited about a couple new things that he got and decided to try out a couple things and email them to me so this was like a new sound that he added like fluty sound and I was like so I like the concept of this but I mean it really is like the next time we sat down so the third session that we had together we sat down and I was like okay I like that sound and that idea but could we get it like lower and change what notes it does and I think it really you know even something small like that can really make a huge difference wanted to show you is how the bridge ended up going through its evolution. This is the first version that we recorded at that first studio session. This is what the bridge sounded like. We all pick our poison But it's a hard pill to swallow 
somebody that very neurotically will just listen to the song over and over again to figure out what I like, what I don't like, what I want to change. When I was on my way home from that session, I just kept wanting the bridge to be over. And I knew that was a really bad sign. So I went home and I was like, okay, how can I make this more interesting? How can I make this a cooler part of the song? So I ended up playing around with keeping it all in a minor key. When I came back, that's what we decided to do. I, I, I got to be like, hey, don't kill me. I have something I need to change. And the cool thing that we ended up doing with the bridge during that second session is not only taking it into a minor key, we kind of stopped everything that was going on in the song to just have it be the piano in this guitar. And the guitar, I loved it because it almost made me feel like the Wild West. I don't know. I thought it was really cool. We all pick our poison But it's a hard pill to swallow and then after that second session when Daniel was playing around with some stuff on his own, he added the little kind of chimey part just to add a little bit of interesting flavor to it. But it's a hard pill to swallow. Finally, I wanted to get into the chorus. I always knew I wanted the chorus to be really strong, and we ended up finding some sound effects that we liked that kind of went along with this idea of having it be very industrial sounding. It had this sound that was like, and it sounded like almost something was being like sliced. probably sounds the most similar to that first day in the studio. We just ended up kind of adding some stuff to beef it up. But the other funny thing that Daniel had looked into um, after our second session was this vocal effect that was almost kind of like a vocorder. So it would take my voice and it would like make lots of other like voices and some of them would be a little bit darker or rounder. He, he sent this to me, which I knew this wasn't the final like balance. It wasn't gonna be this in your face, but it still was a little disturbing to listen to. <laughs> you know, we toned it down a little bit. So that aspect was still there, but it was a little more subtle. So this is how the the final version of the chorus ended up sounding. that we usually do last is any kind of vocal harmonies or added vocal parts. So for this song we had a little bit of both. There were some sections that had some harmonies going on, there were some sections that had kind of like some echoes that I did. Just little bits of sprinkles to add on to the musical Sunday, if you will. I wanna be a hero but the villain's having more fun Which one of us will wear the bigger bruises when the war's done? After we finish completely recording the song, there's two steps that Daniel does on his own. So the first is mixing. And mixing is making sure that there's a good balance of every single part. So literally by the time we finish recording a song, there's like all of these different things, all of these different, you know, the guitar, the bass, like this sound, this sound, vocal, all of these different things. So he literally sits down with them and makes sure all of the levels are um, appropriate. And then the final thing he does is called mastering. First of all, just like it makes it sound extra good. It's like the extra magic that goes into it. But one important thing that it does is it makes it so then when you're listening to a bunch of music back to back that's all different songs and different artists, it makes it so that there's a certain uh, volume level. So you don't have to keep turning the volume down and up with each song that you listen to. And once all of that is done, um, we have the final song, which hopefully you have just come to no, like the back of your hand because you've been listening to it non-stop since it came out. But I hope you guys love how the song turned out. I hope you love how the video turned out. I had so much fun with it and I'm just excited to, to see what's next. Bye!